Hello, this is JB from JB Racing. If you've seen some other videos, you know that I've made some Helion Dominus trucks into raceable vehicles. Uh, you know, it's kind of an inexpensive truck, and I just kind of wanted to see if I could get it to work. I have got them to work pretty well. This is one of the ones that I have raced. Uh, it doesn't have the racing motor in it but it has a practice motor in it which is an XTM which is actually pretty darn good there I like them I actually like that and probably would have no problem racing it and do just as well with it as I do with the uh, my race motors over here is another Helion Dominus truck that has a bunch of aluminum parts on it I did that kind of for fun to see what it'd be like uh, you don't really want to do this for racing because it makes it weigh a ton but I wanted to see. I found these parts. They're very inexpensive. Now look at the truck. This is the Dominus truck. Then I'm going to show you the FS Racing Marauder. This is the FS Racing Marauder. They're ba basically identical. It's really the same thing except the chassis on this is just a little bit shorter. But all the parts will cross over. Which is part of the subject of what I want to talk about. See that little control arm on top? That upper control arm there is an FS Racing part. This is a Helion Dominus part. Note that little notch in there? That little notch is where these things break. I don't know why they thought it was important to do that at Helion, but it does not exist on the FS part. They are absolutely identical otherwise. They're the same exact part. They're made by the same exact people. The molding marks on it appear to be identical. However, they have this little notch that they put, which is probably a filler cap that goes in the mold on the injection molding process. I don't know why they made it. It's just like a little weak spot. I, I'm not, I can't really justify it unless it's supposed to be a breakaway in order to dissipate energy in a hard impact, but it doesn't really make sense for an RC car. So, if you've got Helion Dominus arms like this, don't buy the Helion Dominus part. Search out the FS Racing parts. Uh, they have them on eBay or on Banggood. Look up Banggood. Now, you can buy this little car which I think is just badass. I have really enjoyed these. We have seven of them because there's not really any organized racing. So what we did was we bought a bunch of them and we race them at my track behind my house just for fun. Uh, and I get involved some people and some family that don't really have RC racing as a hobby. And this gives them the a chance to try it out without having to spend any money. Maybe they're never really going to get interested enough to buy anything. It also gives me a chance to let some other people try out one of these uh, short course buggies or desert buggies, whatever you want to call it. Now if you look at this thing, you'll see the front end of this. I have made it. It's a smooth piece of just aluminum. Now the part that goes on there, I'll show you one in just a minute, is a Lexan part. These things take an impact here on the front and that part will break and you cannot find these parts. I've looked everywhere. I've found where they're for sale, but they're all out of stock. I don't know if they'll ever be in stock again. The way these companies make these things, I've done a little homework on that and they'll make these things in a run or two and that's all you'll ever see of them. So I have seven of these and a whole bunch of parts except for bodies and roll cages. You can't get bodies and roll cages, but you can get all of the gears and transmission parts, the arms, all of that. You can get it easy. It's cheap. Now one of the things that I want to bring up about this, even though this thing is really inexpensive, it's literally $129. And I have a coupon. I got this for $99 delivered to my door. About four or five of them I got that cheap. Now they come with a brushed motor which I took out and I put in an inexpensive brushless with an inexpensive brushless speed control. Get those at Banggood. The servo on these isn't too bad. It's good enough. But if some 
one of them starts giving me problems, I yank those out and I put in a better speed control. And there are lots of really good steering speed controls out there that aren't all that expensive. Between 25 and 40 bucks for a speed control that'll hold up good enough for some fun racing. On my race cars, when I my serious race cars, that's the servo. I don't think there's anything better out there in my experience. So there's some other ones I think are probably just as good, but I don't think you can get really much better than that. That's very fast and strong. Now, as far as this is concerned, the there are a couple of key things you want to do with it. It comes with a brass pinion gear in here, and it comes with a 13 tooth, which is the right size for most all your uses. And the smallest one I've been able to get in there is a 12 because the motor hits right here when you try to move it too far this way it'll hit this uh, center support so you can only get a 12 in there but the 12 is great for uh, almost every short track you can imagine a 13 honestly will cover it really well too and that's predominantly what I use the Helion Dominus comes with a 14 and unless you're running that out on the pavement on the open road on really wide long stretches it's that's way too tall of a gear one of the limits of these things, the Dominus and this FS Racing, is the limit of gear ratios that you can put in it. That's one of the things that really hurts it as a race vehicle, uh, certainly for an all-around race vehicle. But I've been able to get around that pretty well by just uh, changing uh, motors, using various motors, and yeah, I can change the gear ratios a little. I've talked a little bit on some other videos about how you can set these up. Uh, one of the things that you want to do is get rid of the shocks. The stock shocks that come on it are just really horrible. So just throw those away. Now these are actually the Traxxas T-Max high volume shocks, which I think are excellent for an inexpensive shock. One step down from that is the T-Max Classic, which is almost as good as this. And that's what I did. Since I have so many of them, I bought T-Max Classic shocks. You can get a set of eight of them for 20 bucks on eBay. And when you have a whole bunch of cars like I do and you got a keep from breaking the bank that's a really good way to get decent shocks on them and those shocks are fantastic for the money I truly love them the best shocks in my opinion for racing of course are pro lines I think they're unbeatable the pro line 60 63s are the one you want on a Dominus truck and I don't race these in any kind of formal racing because I don't know if there is any I've not seen any but the trucks I do, short course racing, I race those all over the East Coast. Even a couple of trips out west I've made. And these uh, Pro-Line uh, shocks are the best thing going. This one has the Pro-Spec shocks on it, which are just as good or maybe even better. Uh, but they don't have the dual rate springs, which I actually like better on the 6063s. Now I've got a couple others of these, well I actually have seven of these, and I'll bring them out here in a few minutes and show them to you, and I'll do that on a separate video, and I'll talk a little bit about what you can do to make these things fun. One of the things that we do that's really fun is we put these cameras on them. See that little camera? And we have these headsets that you wear and race them just like you're sitting in the car rather than watching them from the stand. It's just a, a new experience on how to race them. And these things are very inexpensive. I'll give you an idea where you can source these. You just have a little battery holder here that holds the batteries for the camera. That way you can take it off and on pretty easily. You don't have to dedicate this car to being a camera car. All of these aluminum parts that fit on here will fit on this vehicle as well. And you can get them in all kinds of colors if you want to make you an aluminum car just for the fun of it. It, in my opinion, decreases the speed of them a little but with all that weight i think it improves the handling a little so i don't know there's a kind of a debate on whether you improve enough in handling to be worth that added weight penalty but it sure does make them look cool now this aluminum will get pretty scratched up pretty quick and look kind of crappy but you know the, the black plastic really there is a resilient material that doesn't show scratches it doesn't scratch as easily this is a body mount that i make this I've not seen anybody else do. I don't use pins on my bodies. There are two screws that go in these end holes here. And uh, they are a wide cap screw so they dis disperse the uh, pressure on the body, the Lexan body, and decrease tear out. And it's just a slicker, cleaner look. 
Uh, most of the time when I'm racing, I have plenty of time to take the body off in between. I would just use an electric dry, uh, screwdriver. I pop those out in just a second. Almost as fast as you can take pins out. And I like them. They look a lot better. And you don't have to worry about them falling off on the track. If I'm in a hurry, you can reach right up under the body to change the battery on these. The body on them is loose enough you can reach under there. While I'm on the differences between these two here, these chassis are longer than the little buggy. So is this drive shaft. So the chassis and this drive shaft are not interchangeable. However, just about everything else is. In fact, I think everything else is exactly the same and interchangeable. All of your transmission parts, your differential. Uh, these, the Hellion truck just comes with a straight gear on it. I think I have a, I've got a, a center differential on this one. And this is what I prefer for racing. I actually think it helps keep the front end in front of the back. Now, I don't have one of these apart, I don't think. I may have one I can show you on another video, but this one comes with a slipper clutch when you get it, which is a lot better than the Helion, which comes with just a, a gear and no slipper, just a hard gear on it in the transmission when it comes stock. So you actually get a little bit of an improvement on these. Now, this is not the tires and wheels that come on this. These are Duratrax. The tires and wheels that come on it are okay, but, you know, they're... They're not that great. We got to go ahead and run them. You know, we run them until they're junk because it doesn't take long to wear them down, and they're not very good. They, they're they hard, and they don't uh, get good traction, but that's what to be expected. When you're only put, spending 100 bucks on the thing, it's worth it to put a few more bucks. Cause I'm telling you, you put a few bucks into this, decent shocks, motor, and uh, tires, and this thing will just run with anything. It'll run with anything out there. You can run. I've got an SC10B, and uh, other than the fact that some of these arm fittings are a little bit looser, not really a lot looser, but they'll wiggle just a little, a little bit more than SC10B. But the truth is, it'll do just as good as as those do. I can't really tell a big difference. Uh, when I'm racing, I would race the Associated because I think it is just a little better and it has a little bit more setup options. This one has pretty limited setup options on it. You don't really have any roll center adjustment except what you have out here. Um, you don't have any way to get your anti-squat except just to shim it. Uh, if I really cared about it, I would shim the front here and decrease the anti-squat a little. And the only thing you have for your caster angle is this little thing here that you can move either to the front or back. Your caster angle is not all that adjustable, but everything else on it is pretty adjustable. And you don't really need it. And the truth of it is, a little bit of adjustment on this is all you need because when you get out there banging around the track, you can't tell the difference of a little bit of a looser arm. You just really can't tell it. That's just the bottom line. You're just spending money uh, because somebody's telling you it's better. If you really want to get to be a good racer, get out there and get you a, a couple of cars and just beat the crap out of them and run that old track as many times as you can make yourself run it uh, doing little tweaks here and there trying them out and uh, record your progress and record what you did so that you know if you undid something to, that improved it or if you did something to improve it so you can go back but for the most part run a million laps that's the secret well I'm gonna go make another quick video on just a few of these buggies so that you can see them and show you a little bit inside them just a little bit more. Until next video, see ya.